What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Python tips and tricks tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about doc strings, which are used for documentation in Python. So let us get right into it. Now, those of you who are familiar with Java probably know about Java docs and Java docs are a special kind of comment that you write uh, above a function or above a class uh, and you initialize it with a special comment tag using two stars here. Uh, and we're not going to get too much into Java here. Don't worry. But essentially, you have a bunch of different keywords inside of that Java doc comment. So you have at param, you have at uh, return, and at uh, throws, for example. And for the parameters, the return value, they just describe what the function does. And we have a similar thing in Python, which is called doc strings. So in Python, what we do is we have some sort of function, let's say, um, my uh, exponent, I don't know, my exponentiation, my expo, let's call it that way. And we have two numbers, we have number one, number two here as a parameter. And then what we do is we return number one to the power of number two. This is our function. And now we want to describe that function so that we can get a documentation when we need it. And some IDEs are going to give you a documentation by just hovering over the name. Some are going to um, not do that. Some are going to highlight certain keywords. But the fact is that doc strings in Python are way more flexible than Java doc. So in, in Java, you really need to use at param. Uh, in Python, you can use different keywords as well. So you don't need to use param necessarily. Some IDs highlight it. Some, some IDs do not do that. Um, but the major difference here is that you specify the doc string inside of the function and not above the function. So we initialize it using three quotation marks, either single quotation marks or double quotation marks. And by that we specify a multi line comment a multi line string in here, you can do whatever you want, right? So it's not influencing the code directly. And the first thing that we can do here is we can provide a general description of what the function does. So we can say this function takes one number to the power of another number and returns the result. For example, this is the description of the function. And then what we can do is we can specify the individual, uh, the, the, the information about the individual parameters. So one way to do that, a formal way that for example, is recognized by PyCharm is to say, uh, colon param, uh, and then a space and then you specify the parameter one, which is num one. And then you give a description about the parameter. So this is the base. And then you can say param two, param number two, this is the exponent, for example. And then you can also specify a return value, you can say, return, um, just in general, the result of the calculation. And of course, for this function, it's quite trivial, you don't need that because everyone knows what it does. But for more sophisticated functions, with a bunch of different parameters, of course, you want to have a detailed documentation of what this thing does. Now, I'm not sure if Visual Studio Code is going to show the documentation by hovering. But we can actually go ahead and try to print my expo. Um, you know, as you can see, it already does it. This is the base. Um, actually, why is it saying this is the base? Probably because I'm currently working at parameter number one. So you can see this is the base, uh, let's say eight to the power of wow, it actually works as you can see. So when I when I'm actually I didn't know that actually, so it's a, it's a little bit spontaneous in this video. But actually, while you're typing in the individual parameters, it recognizes the param keyword here. So it actually probably is as rigid as the, a Java doc, if you wanted to recognize it. Um, but you can see this is the base because I'm currently entering number one here. So let's say eight, and then once I hit the comma, it switches to number two, which is the exponent and it also shows that so uh, eight to the power of two. And this is very impressive, because when we hover about uh, when we hover over this function name here, you can see this function takes one number to the power of another number and returns the result. And then you can see the parameter and uh, return description at the bottom. So it works. And uh, we can also go ahead and run this if we're interested in that. Uh, and you can see 64 is the result. And another way to also see the documentation if you're not using a fancy IDE is to actually go ahead and say print help my expo. 
without calling it, you just pass it. And then what you get is actually the comment, uh, the, the, the documentation, sorry. Uh, another way is to also go ahead and say my expo. And then you say dot underline underline doc underline underline. You can also do it like that. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Documentations are a very important thing in programming. A lot of programmers, most programmers, in fact, do not document their code. For a simple function like this one, it might not be necessary, but if you're working on a huge project with many different libraries, classes, functions, and these functions are more sophisticated uh, and the parameters are not that clear or self-explanatory, you want to have a documentation. You definitely want to use doc strings in Python or Java doc in Java and different documentation methods in different languages. So this is a very important part of programming and now you know about it in Python. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.